So today we're going to start listening to some poems. They're story poems, so they tell a story um, about different cats from Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. And for those of you who are reading or listening to Catscape, it links in quite nicely. So um, these poems were written by T.S. Eliot, and this book has been illustrated by Axel Schaefer, who is the same illustrator as um, who did the drawings for the Gruffalo and lots of Julia Donaldson books. So you might recognise the style. Um, I'm going to read the blurb at first on the back. Jellicle cats come out tonight. Jellicle cats come one, come all. The jellicle moon is shining bright. Jellicles come to the jellicle ball. You might recognise the rhythm. I don't know whether you saw the film Cats that came out at Christmas time, but it is based on the poems from this um, book. Um, and also there's a show called Cats that was produced by Andrew Lloyd, Lloyd Webber, blah, Andrew Lloyd Webber and sometimes comes to Edinburgh. So we're just reading them. Cats. Some are sane, some are mad, and some are good and some are bad. Meet magical Mistopheles, sleepy old Deuteronomy, and curious rum tum tugger. But you'll be lucky to meet master criminal McCavity, because McCavity's not there. A stunning new edition of T.S. Eliot's beloved cat poems, containing beautiful colour illustrations by Axel Schaefer. And today, we're going to read the first of these poems, and... It is called The Naming of Cats. Let's see if I can show the picture. The naming of cats is a difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think at first I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you that a cat must have three different names. First of all, there's the name that the family use daily, such as Peter, Augustus, Alonzo or James, such as Victor or Jonathan, George or Bill Bailey. All of them sensible, everyday names. There are fancier names if you think they sound sweeter. Some for the gentlemen, some for the dames. Such as Plato, Admetius, Electra, Demeter. But all of them sensible, everyday names. But I tell, I tell you, a cat needs a name that's particular. A name that's peculiar and more dignified. Else how can he keep up his tail perpendicular? It means at right angles, or spread out his whiskers, or cherish his pride. Of names of this kind, I can give you a quorum, such as mon Monkastrap, Quaxo, or Coriocopat, such as Bombalorina, or else Jeliorum, names that never belong to more than one cat. But above and beyond, there's still one name left over, and that is the name that you never will guess. The name that no human research can discover, but the cat himself knows and will never confess. When you notice a cat in profound meditation, the reason I tell you is always the same. His mind is engaged in a rapt contemplation that means thinking of the thought, of the thought, of the thought of his name. His ineffable, effable, effinimineffable, deep and inscrutable singular name, the one that's just for him. And that is the naming of cats. That takes us on to the old Gumby cat, which is the one that I will read tomorrow. 